everyone, it's Melissa. Welcome back. I've been wanting to do this type of video for a long time. It's been kind of queuing its way up on my list and I decided I was finally just going to go for it. So the idea for this video is to take a post from Instagram and use it as inspiration for your makeup look today. So here's a little story time, backstory on this whole situation. Way back when I first really started watching YouTube videos, I watched a tutorial and went out and bought all the products. I loved this look. I bought all the products. I queued up the video. I applied it and it was like, oh, that doesn't look anything like the YouTuber who posted that look. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me where did I go wrong? And it kind of turned me off from trying that for a long time. And it wasn't until I really started shopping my stash for the um, trend videos that I do in the spring and the fall that I realized you don't always have to have exactly what they're using to be inspired by that. So I use Instagram for looks, for color combos, all kinds of inspiration. Not necessarily to follow the look and get it exactly, but something that is has that feel. So that's what I've done today. And this is the picture, I'm gonna go ahead and post the picture, I think up here, uh, of the Instagram post that I am using for my inspiration today. This is Robin from Alaron Beauty. I'm going to include a link to her Instagram below. She does phenomenal eye looks and she typically will take a palette and do 10 looks for that palette and then uh, post them uh, individually on her Instagram with all the details. So if you do go ahead and check her out, go ahead and uh, tell her that I sent you so that she knows where all this traffic is coming from because sometimes people don't have any idea what's going on. She used a palette for this look that I don't own. It's a beautiful palette, but I don't own this palette. This soul blooming palette. But I thought I could recreate this using some palettes that I have in my stash. And that is what I have done. I'm gonna quickly run through the palettes that I used, and then I will go ahead and queue up the, the demo or the tutorial of how I put this look together. Most of the matte shades that I used for this look came out of the Kat Von D Shade and Light because it has such a great assortment of colors, including some of these warm tones that are in this look that I didn't think I would be able to achieve the feel of this look without that. So I used several shades from this palette. So for the pinky purpley inner corner look, I used the Pat McGrath palette, the subliminal palette, and I used this shade here. And then for the darker purple on the outer lid, I went back to an old favorite, the Japanesque pixelated color palette, and I used this purple down here. In the end, I also used this as a little highlighter because I really felt like I needed some brightness. So while this doesn't look exactly like her post, <laughs> it is inspired by it. And I had to adapt a few things for my hooded eyes, bring colors up a little higher. You'll get the drill. I'm going to go ahead and cue the video. So I've already started by putting a little bit of primer all over my lid from my lashes to my brows and have let that kind of set in. You can use your favorite primer. I just happen to have the Lorac one because it seems like every palette I buy I get a sample and it lasts a really long time. I'm not upset by that. I think it works okay. So I'm going to start by putting some color in my transition and up under my brow bone. And for those colors, I'm going to be going into the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. And I'm going to use this color here for my transition. I think I'm going to go into here up under my brow bone. So this transition shade pretty closely matches my skin tone, just like a little bit deeper. And I'm going to go in with this Eco Tools brush. This is their large shadow brush. I like this because it has a nice point on it and I can focus the point, like point the point, <laughs> like in my crease and then there's enough shadow up and above that it kind of does the whole thing for you. 
So I'm going to go into that shade and it is, okay, Kat Von D. Who can read those words? They're not even normal words. And the font is crazy. And just sweep that along and then like blend it a little bit. I'm going to clip this. so I don't have to keep holding it up. So it's a little bit warmer than I would normally put in my crease area, but this the reference photo does have a little bit more warmth up there and I think it helps balance out the coolness. The next thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the brow bone highlight shade. I'm gonna use this one here and I'm gonna just focus it on the tip of this same brush. And you, I know you're thinking like, this is a big brush to put under your brow, but because you're putting on, on the tip, it works out okay. And then I just kind of blend it into that upper, soften that line a little bit. Now I'm going to focus on the mobile part of my lid. And I'm going to tell you about the colors I'm going to use first, and then I'm going to apply them. I'm going to use this shade here from the Pat McGrath. So I'm going to put that on the entire mobile part of my lid. And the reason why I'm doing that because I feel like it really helps blend when I put the darker purple on the outer corner and it also like changes that shade a little bit and brightens it a little bit. And for that darker purple I'm going to go into the Japanesque uh, pixelated palette, pixelated color palette, and I'm going to use this purple down here. So let's get started by putting a little bit of a glitter primer on the mobile part of my lid. I'm going to be using the NYX glitter primer and a very small detailed like blem um, concealer brush. I want to have a lot of control. I want to be able to just place that exactly where I want it. So I'm going to just squeeze a little bit of this primer on my back of my hand and use this very small brush to apply the primer to the mobile part of my lid. That's a little too much, so I'm just gonna pat some of it off. And I wanna make sure I get really close to the lash line because I want the color to really adhere well. I'm gonna start by applying this shade all over where I just applied the glitter primer, and I'm using just a small, like a little detailed brush. When you have a hooded eye, it's all about control. You wanna keep those colors exactly where you want them. And so I'm just going to pat that along until I have it to the intensity that I want. And I want to really make sure that I'm getting right into the corner of my eye here. I want a lot of brightness there. So using that same brush, which I've cleaned off a little bit, I'm going to go into the darker purple and I'm going to focus that on this outer corner about here and gently kind of meet somewhere in the middle with a little bit of shading gradation. I'm gonna turn my light on because it's kind of a cloudy day and maybe that'll help keep the light consistency equal. Yeah, it looks a little harsh right now, but that'll get smoothed out. Now because my lids are hooded and that color really disappears, what I'm going to do is try and like blend a little bit of that dark purple up a little bit so you can see it above my um, crease. I need to go in and deepen my crease a little bit so I'm going to go in with this shade here from the Kat Von D palette with a really small shader brush. This is MUA Professional 315. It says it's a crease brush. Oh, interestingly enough, I'm going to be using it in my crease. So I'm just going to very gently apply a little bit of color here. And I'm going to take a clean uh, blending brush. This is the tapered blending brush from Sonia Kashuk's new brush line. And I'm just going to just blend that all around. I really want to soften that dark color. Applied a little too much on this side. Blend it out a little. Add a little bit more over here just to make sure that color is even. I think I'm going to go in with a bigger blending brush. 
that's better. So I want to make sure what I've done on my lid, I didn't just blend it all away. And you may have noticed I have no face product on because I want to really be able to clean up under my eyes once I'm done because this is going to be a rather dark, intense look and I want it to look as clean and bright under there as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and get back into this little detail brush. Do the lighter color from the Pat McGrath palette on the inner corner of my eye real quick and just intensify that a little. You might notice in the reference photo she used a like inner corner highlight color, which I don't like the way that looks on me. I think it emphasizes all that is not cool about my eye. <laughs> so instead, what I like to do is really intensify the brightness along the mobile part of my lid at the inner corner there, which is what I just did. So I just really want to make sure that that's going to pick up as much light as possible. Now I'm going to go back into the purple color from the Japanese palette here and do the same thing. I'm going to reapply a little bit on the mobile part of my lid and then I'm going to overlap a little bit up here and I'm going to go back to this tapered blending brush and just blend that up a little bit. I do want some of that purple to show above my crease line so I'm just tapping a little extra color overlapping on that brown the darker brown that I had in my crease. So we're almost done. I think what I'm going to do next is go back into the shade and light palette. You'll notice in the reference photo she has a little bit of like a, a warm brown right along this edge here. I'm going to dip into this shade here very lightly with this tapered blending brush and just try and bring a little bit up along here and I might also brighten up under my brow bone again. This is the kind of thing, tap off your brush, you want to make sure you do a little bit at a time. You can always add more. It is really hard to take stuff away. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little makeup remover wipe, clean up under my eyes, and then apply some face product. When I'm done, I will finish the rest of my eye look. So now I want to bring a little bit of color under my lower lash line. And I think what I'm going to st start off with is this, this shade here. And just, lay like it's almost like a transition shade under my lash line. That uh, I want to lay that down and then I'm going to go in with the dark purple just on the outer corner. What I'm trying to achieve here is just a little definition at the outer corner of my eye without dragging too much color underneath the lash line because then I'm going to tight line with the dark uh, black powder from the Kat Von D shade and light palette. I'm just going to go ahead and use this little square flat shader brush, apply the color right on the tip, get in real close to my mirror. I actually really kind of like to dip my mirror down a little bit. So I'm just bringing that color up along the tight line and wiggling it just a teeny tiny bit up into the lashes. I'm pretty sure in the reference photo she used some liner along her lash line, but I just, I can't put that kind of liner on my lash line because it just disappears. So I finished up with uh, some Rockateur blush and on my lips I have the Rimmel lip liner in downtown snob. Is that what it's called? East End snob. So I'm going to go ahead and get in close for a close-up shot of this look. So I will often take a look from Instagram and adapt it and make it my own. Maybe I like the color combinations. You know, it's like a color combination that I never would have thought of using before and I get inspired by that. Or if there's a palette that they are using that I have, it sometimes re-inspires me to break that out and uh, 
work up a look similar to what they have. I think the lesson that I learned here is you don't always have to buy everything that you see in a tutorial. You can often recreate a look by shopping your stash, which I am all about that life, and you can get a look that's beautiful and inspired by that even though it doesn't turn out looking exactly like that. I hope you enjoyed the format of this video, something a little bit different. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every Saturday morning and I'll include a, a link up here to last week's video and you can click on this little B icon to subscribe. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Take care.